While futures thinking looks at where the world is going in the long term, systems thinking looks at, at the world as it is now and where it will be in the short term. It is the opposite of decomposition, which we looked at in backcasting. In systems thinking, instead of isolating smaller and smaller parts of a system being studied, we expand our view to incorporate larger and larger interactions. In doing so, we build up a model of a problem under study and the various systems involved in the problem. And we do this naturally in our interactions with the world, constructing mental models of the people and environments in which we interact. But these represent just models of the world, mental models, but they will always be inaccurate as we do not have full understanding of the world and people that we base our mental models on. System thinking, however, is an explicit process of trying to broaden the model we have of a particular problem. And in doing so, it permits us to approach the problem in new ways. Now, teaching students about systems thinking provides an opportunity to develop a range of data and information concepts, including visualization and simulation modeling. It also helps students to engage with, with complexity, uncertainty, and risks. So when they consider their problem, they can do so from a range of different perspectives. Systems themselves can involve pretty much anything. Structures, properties, behaviours, the interaction of people and components, their inputs, processes and outputs, and it can be within and between natural, managed, constructed and digital environments. So an example of a system. Let's take a supermarket. Now a supermarket can have many different systems involved depending upon our perspective. From a management's perspective, it's a profit-making system to maximise and develop their profits. For suppliers, it's a means of distributing their goods. For employees, it's an employment system. For customers, it's a supply system. For loiterers, it's an entertainment system. And for local residents, it may be a social system. And for some, for single customers, it may be a dating system. So there can be a whole range of systems and subsystems within an entity such as a supermarket. But there are, there are a whole lot of other systems involved as well. And any problem that we're trying to address involving a supermarket would need to consider the variety of systems and subsystems and then wider systems that the supermarket may be part of. Uh, within a supermarket, other systems would include security systems, fire control systems, payroll systems, stock management systems, evacuation systems, and many, many others. The most common example of a system, however, is a bicycle. Now, a bicycle has a range of systems and subsystems that make up what we call a bicycle. It has a wheel system, it has a braking system, a gearing system, a steering system, a a seating system, a whole range of systems that go together to form what we know of as a bicycle. But children will often think of the properties of a system as belonging to the individual parts of it, rather than arising from the interactions of these parts. But by considering the different uses we can put a bicycle to, we can then consider the properties of the different subsystems, but also how the bicycle can fit into larger systems. So here we have an example of where bicycle is being used for different forms of transportation, but also healthcare and even education. Each of these uses, however, may require a rethink of the individual subsystems of a bicycle. We see this in the specialisations of bicycles. Mountain bikes have a frame and braking subsystem that is stronger, while road bikes have tyres, or the tyre subsystem is designed to be thinner and lighter or hybrid bikes have a rider subsystem where they're positioned differently to optimise comfort and manoeuvrability. And for more extreme uses, subsystems can be further modified to solve particular problems. The key concept is that by thinking of the world as a series of interconnected systems, students can start to see how changing one system will impact on others. And that the problem that they are addressing may be the result of failures in subsystems quite removed from the obvious system related to the problem.
but also that the solutions they develop to problems may have widespread consequences on systems far removed from that which is the most obvious. Thank you.